Well, hey there, lovely people. We're going to look at multiplying and dividing fractions today. Now, even though we have the Desmos calculator, some of this you'll have to do longhand. So you really want to practice writing these problems out and solving them. It will become very beneficial to you as you're moving forward. So let's dive in. When I look at the rules for multiplying a fraction by a fraction, say I have two-thirds times six sevenths. And I want to take that fraction times a fraction. The rule is simple. It's just top times the top, bottom times the bottom. But if you remember from the fraction skills video, you can cross simplify. So if I look at those numbers three and six, they are both divisible by three. Three divided by three is one, six divided by three is two. So those numbers will now replace that denominator and then that numerator. So now I can just do two times two, top times the top, and one times seven, bottom times the bottom. Well, seven's a prime number and four is not a factor of seven, so that is my simplified answer. Two thirds times six sevenths is four sevenths. So easy peasy, top times the top, bottom times the bottom. Well, what if I have a fraction and then a whole number? So say I have 4 fifths times 15. Well, any time I have a fraction and a whole number, or any time I'm really multiplying or dividing fractions, I want a fraction and a fraction, not a whole number, not a mixed number. So in order to turn 15 into a fraction, I'm going to put a 1 under it, right? If you like it, then you should have put a 1 under it, right? Like Beyonce. So I'm going to rewrite that as 15 over 1. Because again, I'm trying to do top times the top, bottom times the bottom. So when I look at now these two fractions, I want a fraction and a fraction. Again, I can look diagonally. 5 and 15 are both divisible by 5. That becomes a 1. That becomes a 3. Now I just do top times the top, bottom times the bottom. Four times three is 12, and one times one is one. And of course, 12 divided by one is 12. So sometimes your answer is gonna be a whole number, and that's okay. Just remember, you want a fraction and a fraction. Speaking of that, say I have three and two thirds, times four and one half. And I want to multiply these mixed numbers. Well, I just said I want a fraction times a fraction. So your first step is going to convert these mixed numbers to improper fractions. You cannot separate the whole numbers and then step and then and we can't separate the whole numbers out, multiply them, and then multiply the fractions. That's not how this works. This is a married couple. This is a married couple. They have to stay together. So we're going to change them to improper fractions. We do that by multiplying the bottom, add the top, work your way around. Multiply the bottom, add the top, work your way around. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So that's really 11 thirds times 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is nine over two. Now that I have a fraction and a fraction, I could look at cross simplifying. Three and nine are both divisible by three. Three divided by three is one. Nine divided by three is three. Now I'm gonna do 11 times three, 33. One times two is two. I cannot leave my answer improper like that. So I'm going to do 33 divided by 2. 2 goes into 3 one time. I'm going to subtract and bring down that 3. 2 goes into 13 six times. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to bring it here. 13 minus 12 is 1. Here's my whole number, numerator, because that's what you have left over, denominator. So 33 over 2 is 16 and 1 half, right? So lots of steps to remember. 
you have improper fractions, I'm sorry, if you have mixed numbers, you're going to convert to an improper fraction, cross simplify, multiply top times the top, bottom times the bottom, bottom, sorry, and then simplify your answer, right? So lots of steps to remember. Remember, you can also use your notes as you're practicing, and that'll have these steps written down for you. All right, let's get rid of this as we transition to dividing fractions. Now, if you can multiply fractions, you can divide them because there's just one additional step. So say I have, what's the number I haven't used yet so far? Say I have, I don't know, 8 ninths divided by 2 thirds. So when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, your first step is going to use a process called keep, change, flip. Very similar to like when we subtracted integers, right? That keep, change, flip. So I'm going to keep my first fraction, 8 ninths. I'm going to change division to multiplication, and then I'm going to flip or take the reciprocal of that second fraction. So it was 2 thirds. Now it's 3 over 2. Once I have that going for me, I can just multiply the way that I've been practicing, right? I look first to see if I can cross simplify. Three and nine are both divisible by three. Three divided by three is one. Nine divided by three two is, sorry, nine divided by three is three. Then I have eight and two. Two divided by two is one. Eight divided by two is four. Now I have these smaller numbers, and I just do top times the top. Four times one is four, bottom times the bottom, three times one is three, and I can do some mental math with this improper fraction. If I have four, I can take out one group of three, and one out of three would be left over, right? So if it's easy, you don't have to show that long division step if you can do it with some mental math. All right, let's get to the crazy part. Let's divide some mixed numbers. So say I have 6 and 1 half divided by, actually I'm going to do 6 and 1 half divided by 8, right? I have a mixed number and a whole number. But remember, I want a fraction and a fraction. So before I do anything else, I'm going to make these improper fractions. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13. And then I'm going to write or type divided by 8 over 1. I'm going to keep it division until I have a fraction and a fraction. Now I keep, change, flip. So that's 13 over 2 times 1 over 8. And these look like doable. 13 times 1 is 13. 2 times 8 is 16. 13 is a prime number. And I'm done. It does not go into 16. So 13 sixteenths would be my final answer. So sometimes it might look confusing, but if we follow the steps one at a time and show our work, we can get to that final answer. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. Love ya. Bye.